Uh, of course, we talk about backup generators and uh, talk about putting additional springs at the headworks. But one thing that we also did at the plant, uh, redundancy, there again, there's enough solar power at this facility to run the facility. So we thought it was important to make sure that uh, you know, first, we're, first uh, you know, we're working at a wastewater facility and we're all environmentally uh, concerned, or if you don't work at a wastewater plant, you don't have a concern for, for the environment. But uh, you know, part of protecting the environment also is reducing our carbon footprint. And the way we're going to do it is uh, install solar. And we've installed enough solar. This is about a third of the solar panels that we have erected at this facility. And, uh, and uh, the other half is down at the, uh, at the old Are the solar panels online right now? Maybe? Yes, solar panels are online and running. We have a computer program uh, in the operations building that shows them uh, that how much excess power we put on the grid. The last time I was out there, I think the number was $25,000 of excess power that we created there with those solar panels in excess of what we used put back on the grid. And we have that bulk up here. It's not just a the coochie. We have solar panels. We have enough capacity to run a significant amount of power at a much greater facility also. So if generate if, uh, if uh, on these treatment facilities, we have two sources of power coming in for each one of them. One from Coldwood Electric, one from Georgia Power. Uh, in hopes that if Georgia Power goes down, Coldwood's still up. If both of them go down, Generator fires up and runs. If the generator goes down and it's doing the daylight night, we got solar power. We're still going to be able to operate that plant and give uh, Georgia Power and Colquitt crews time to get out there and, and effect the repairs on the. Uh, on the uh, sir, sir. Yes. Uh, I need to have a lot of really good in uh, Mother Creek. And the last time they were even thinking something about jumping to Mother Creek or something like that, where is that? How's that to make? It's not connected to our system at all. That's a big part of it. It's a bad out there, what do we do when we have a spill? Yeah. You know, exactly, you know, you guys don't do anything when you have a spill. Just sit up there and wait for the next one to happen. Absolutely <laughs> not true. You know, whenever we have a spill, uh, our guys are assigned for each spill that's not just if we have a spill today and next week we have another one, it doesn't start over. 365 days from the day that we have that spill, we're out testing to make sure that we have no effect on the water body. There is an effect, we have to report it. But if there's a spill Monday, 365 from Monday. If there's a spill Friday, 365 from, from, from that Friday. And that's each location that we have a spill. Not just uh, if it spills over on Beavis Road, you know, that's a new reportable incident with new monitoring requirements. And our environmental folks are out there every day, every day pulling samples. And actually pulling samples in uh, more areas than, than we're required to. One thing that I want to, uh, you, know, I, you know, I said at the beginning of the presentation, the Wipicucci doesn't come into the city of Alaska at any point. We go north of the city to monitor and evaluate water quality in the river before it comes into our geographic area. We go there. We have an outfall that comes from the Wipicucci plant, which is over two miles away to that river, we go monitor there at that point every day. We go down to, and we go down to the Florida line with the country going 20 odd miles from where we are and take water quality measurements again to make sure that things that are happening in Valrosta don't affect the water quality. We also go a step farther and I want to be I want to put this out. You know when we see we've seen Equal numbers increase in the river before storm, after storm, before release, after, re after release. Significant numbers 
in the Whistler Coochie north of Valdosta. We've seen the numbers change. You know, in the middle of town, we've seen the numbers change. It's become higher even south at the Florida line where we monitor. But I got a way to ensure that those numbers, those people counts that they were receiving, they took the liberty to say, let's send this up to another lab, a third party lab, two states away in Tennessee, and doesn't even know where Valdosta is, and see if this people matter is human or not. So we sent the samples up there, paid for that, pretty, uh, pretty hefty cost. And data comes back that the people going to collect it, they're not in the DNA. So uh, you know, we, were, uh, we, were, we, were, uh, we were glad that those numbers came back and, and gave us that clarity that, that yeah, there are people numbers in the river, and they change daily. When you go out today, you get a number, you go out tomorrow, Number of maybe other days, maybe reduced. Um, but we wanted to make sure that what we do right here in this city has limited effect 